The Terriers piled up 61 points against Buffalo, the second highest score in BU history. And with Doherty resting in the second half, quarterbacks Greg Moore and Chris Pinsons each threw their first touchdown pass of the season. No one could have imagined how crucial all three quarterbacks would be in the weeks ahead. During the first half of Game 10 with Connecticut, Doherty completed only 10 passes, but they covered 228 yards. The Terriers just couldn't get the ball into the end zone, and they trailed at the break for only the second time all year. On his way to the third best passing season in BU history, Doherty finished the day with a season-high 339 yards, much of it after he sustained a separated right shoulder. But defense in a running game will win every time, and the Terriers had both all year long. In the last 10 minutes of a tie game, interceptions by Chris Helen and John Hickey gave the BU defense 20 takeaways in five weeks. And when Zach Burwell converted both into touchdowns, the Terriers had their 10th win. No BU team had ever done that. So it came down to one more game, one more win for a perfect regular season. If the Terriers were to stay unbeaten, though, they'd have to do it without Robert Doherty. His shoulder needed rest. So the call went out to fifth-year senior Greg Moore. It had been 54 weeks since Moore's last start. That loss in Maine, the eighth loss of the 1992 season, the last time BU lost a football game. But in this season of incredible stories, Moore started writing his own, battling into the end zone from four yards out. These were two of the highest scoring teams in the nation, and the first half featured a stunning offensive display, with each team rolling up more than 300 yards of offense. Steve Agee's 12-yard score gave the Dukes a 21-7 lead, and they might have had more, if not for a crucial turnover inside the BU 5-yard line. But the red gun offense was moving the ball too, and Greg Moore had been studying his Robert Doherty handbook, scrambling, throwing on the run, giving his receivers time to get open. His favorite target was sophomore Ron Stevenson. Carnell Henderson was back in Boston with a sprained ankle, and like Moore, Stevenson was making the most of his chance. Desperate for a score to cut into the lead before halftime, BU faced a fourth and two at the James Madison 33-yard line. Greg Moore has to snap it. He does. He's back to throw and looking. He's got some time. Now he's under pressure. He fires to the right. Caught by Ron Stevenson. He's down the sideline. He will go in for the touchdown. Moore and Stevenson looked like they were just playing catch 11 times for 143 yards. But at halftime, there was certainly cause for concern. Defensively, we were getting blown off the ball. Up front, linebackers, we were getting blown off. And that, and that disgusted me and it disgusted the other guys. And we sort of grabbed ourselves in, in the locker room and said, hey, this can't go on. We have something that's right there for us. We don't want to be tied for Yankee Conference champs. That's, that's bull. We don't want that. The Red Storm gathered strength and slowly but unmistakably turned the momentum around. James Madison wasn't getting good yardage on first and second downs. On third downs, they converted only one of ten. And after a short punt by Scott Frazier from the back of his own end zone, the Terriers had their chance to pull even. Same red gun, new ammunition. Moore back to throw, plenty of time in the pocket, fires end zone, and it is a touchdown! A touchdown for Boston University! Carlton Myers goes to his knees to make the catch! The score was still tied into the fourth quarter. The Boston University defense continued its relentless punishing attack, allowing James Madison just 96 yards of offense in the second half. From the BU 20-yard line with 12 minutes to play, Greg Moore and Carlton Myers connected again, this time for 30 yards out to midfield. All of a sudden, the ball seemed to be bouncing BU's way. If good luck is when hard work meets opportunity, the Terriers had all three. They were prepared to seize this moment. Chris Helen on the hole, the clean snap. Morello drives it up, and it is good! Nine minutes and one second left to go in this football game. Boston University has their first lead of the day. The last couple snaps were probably the most emotional snaps I've, I've, I've taken, you know, being on offense and it was, you're lining up and you have tears in your eyes. The Boston University Terriers are 11 and 0. They are the Yankee Conference champions for 1993. Greg Moore had earned this ride from veteran linemen Matt Demshar and Tim Foley. He had thrown for a Boston University record 
442 yards. For him to come in in a situation that he did in the 11th game of the season, having to win that football game to keep our perfect record and to win the conference outright, to me, talk about pressure. Now, he handled that unbelievably. And he played perhaps his best game of his career here at Boston University. Once a team rises to the occasion, um, every individual also rises to the occasion. Uh, when you have a Robert Doherty playing to, 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 to this level, then you're going to have a Greg Moore playing to this level. Um, you know, when you have a Cardell Henderson playing to this level, you're going to have a Ronnie Stevenson also stepping up because, you know, if, if you're next to greatness, you, you better. I never did I think that we had to go undefeated in our last game to win the conference outright. To me, that is something in its own self uh, that is, is, should tell you something about the conference that we play in, but it tells you a great deal about our players, too. Boston University had run the table, 11-0, coming from behind in six of their last seven games, three times in the second half. BU moved into the 1AA playoffs as the number four seed in the nation and earned a first-round home game against the University of Northern Iowa. The Panthers were a seasoned playoff team, and in the first half, they combined the running of Jeff Stovall and the throwing of quarterback Kurt Warner to forge an early lead. A second field goal by Scott Obermeyer gave Northern Iowa a six-point halftime advantage. The Panthers then took the second-half kickoff and marched 72 yards in seven plays, with Turner Ward taking a Warner pass 40 yards for a touchdown. Just three plays later, Robert Doherty, now playing with an aggravated shoulder and a broken finger on his left hand, was called for intentional grounding in the end zone. The safety made it 21-6 Northern Iowa. The Terriers were in trouble. If ever there were a time they needed a big play, this was it. So it's a first down for the Panthers. This is Stovall. Stovall with a flag thrown, drops the football. BU has it coming back. Remember, you can return it. Here it goes. It's John Schaefer. Schaefer is in for a touchdown. Schaefer's touchdown brought the crowd and the team back into the game. Still, the BU offense had scored only once heading into the fourth quarter, and they'd have to find a way to move the football. Darty was being pressured by an aggressive Northern Iowa defense. He was sacked ten times in the ball game. But the BU defense had toughened too. With a little more than eight minutes to play, the Terriers took over on their own eight-yard